Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Well, I guess it started many years ago, sitting around the campfire in Yellowstone with these ass clowns, like cavemen recounting their gazelle hunting stories in, you know, traditional unga bunga. Anyway, someone put on some music eventually, some Lord Huron, and at first I was pretty apathetic towards it, but then I grew up and finally felt the touch of a woman, and from there I began to understand the music more and more. Smash cut to now, where I have all their albums and even their EPs on vinyl that I sit around all day and cry to. I mean, do push-ups to. I've even been to a few shows over the years, and it was time for another one this year in Albuquerque with the same crew that I was camping in Yellowstone with that fateful night. Of course, I'd need to bring a camera with me as per usual, but we'll cover that later, if you're lucky. I mean, shit, you read the title of the video, so it's not really gonna be a fucking surprise, is it? Before we left for our trip, I did some very professional maintenance on the bike. Old rust bucket. Yep, it still works. My totally platonic, nothing sexual has ever happened between us, I swear, riding partner Tim and I would cruise on out east to meet everyone, starting at the very ass crack of dawn. Good long day. Yeah. Longer now, without looking at this. <laughs> Anyway, after drinking some burnt liquid diarrhea activator, we hopped on our hogs and set sail out into the morning with chrome between our butt cheeks. Holy shit, I can get here. I put a microphone in the helmet. What a concept. I guess now's as good a time as any to talk to you. We have uh, five hours and 347 miles to our destination. Speaking of destination, we're heading to Phoenix. Uh, ultimately, our goal is to get to Albuquerque, but that's 800 miles, and uh, that's just not going to happen in one day. It's supposed to be 90 in Arizona by about 1 p.m. today, and LA traffic is uh, world famous, so we figured we'd kill two birds with one stone. I early. It's a good strategy. The uh, downside, of course, you yeah, gotta wake up early and drink IHOP coffee. Uh, looks like we're going into a cloud. Feels like it. It's f***ing cold. Oh yeah, a little bit of rain. Wow. I don't know if you can see up ahead, but it looks like we're about to um, come out of uh, this cloud cover. kind of weather uh Vasa holds Simba up to, you know what I mean? Or wait, no, it's the monkey. Alright. First gas stop of the trip. Lighting's good, hopefully I can shoot something. So I didn't shoot anything here. That's the most beautiful Dollar General I've ever seen. I mean, it was the lighting, but you know. Um, I'm in a Palm Desert now. There has been a lot of uh, dust kick up. Yeah. Damn. Like it's in my pants. My ass is getting a little sore anyway. Anyway, it was time to shoot. At a gas station I've been to 13 million times, I'm not at all exaggerating for dramatic effect. Of course, I'm at nothing at all, except maybe annoying, without a camera in hand. So as you probably already know, I brought one along with some Ektachrome preloaded in it. The Rolleiflex T, a semi-modular TLR camera that has been retrofitted to shoot 645 format for economy. And just because I love to f my shit up and can't have anything just be normal. It fits really well into my tank bag and it doesn't really get in the way when the vibrations of the bike spur my enthusiasm and catch my drift. It's also perfect.
perfect for shooting nothing but gas stations, which is about all I shoot on these road trips because we have to stop at like six of them every day. The Rolly Flex is a camera that I am still getting used to. We're still in the talking stage, you know what I mean? I like using it quite a bit and the results are always nice, but it isn't always intuitive. These first few photos, they ain't bad. I suppose I could definitely hate on them a lot more. This one is actually good, except for the fact it's underexposed. I just got a little lucky. I saw this red bus parked in the distance. I went over to take a photo of it, and the guy who lives in it, I guess, happened to cruise up on his bike. So I snapped a photo and then, you know, ran away like a good street photographer. Eventually we made it to Phoenix as the sun was starting to slow cook us alive on the bikes. I sat down at a diner and had a healthy discourse and discourse for lunch about whether or not we should continue onward and try and kill some miles towards Albuquerque. I also took a photo of Tim on Ectochrome and there clearly wasn't enough light in there for it to happen. I shoot my Ectochrome through a heavy warming filter which essentially takes away like a stop of light making this effectively a 50 ISO film. And 50 ISO with a 3.5 lens indoors isn't gonna work out well for you nine times out of 10 and it's about time I learned that lesson. I do like what it did to the light refracted through his triple Long Island iced tea here. It makes it look like his hand isn't making contact with the glass and it's doing some Chris Angel floating shit. Anyway, we decided 400 miles was enough for one day, especially with it getting up and over, you know, 100 degrees out there. So we planted our sweet asses at the bar and had some victory beers, followed by a totally sober and quiet night at the hotel. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. Isn't Scrooge the name of that squirrel from Ice Age? <laughs> <laughs> you see they have a Waffle House? Yeah, I saw that when I ran to town. Oh. Yeah. Do you hear this, Jason's audience? This has been easy as f I'm gonna lock you out of this hotel room as soon as you leave. Where's my f***ing ranch? Didn't she give us like a shit ton of ranch? Who's yours? That's my ranch. I am ranch. Mm. You ever made your own ranch? Yes. Really? Yeah. What's, yeah, what's the base? Can I ever be milk? Like regular milk? No, Tim, like breast milk. What the f*** would you put milk in your ranch? What kind of dumbass? Are you videoing yourself eating pizza right now? Yeah. Do you ever feel ashamed of what your life has become? Constantly. The next day, the planned route was Phoenix to our friend's place in Albuquerque, another 400-something miles, which is pretty dumb. Up until this point, I would say about 375 miles was, you know, our record, and I'd say by the end of that day, yeah, we were two cranky jackasses. So who knows what this day had in store for us. I mean, I do, because I've already lived through this hell, but you're just gonna have to find out. Uh, that was so early. Yep. Damn, just missed it. You think that's gonna mix well with coffee? good about it. feel okay for, you know, <laughs> having drank nine beers last night. Today we're heading to Albuquerque. We're up early because it's gonna get really hot and uh, 
kind of don't want to deal with that. Ooh, cracker barrel. <laughs> Tim sees it too. We have uh, another 400 miles to do, and uh, we don't want to do it in the heat. This is the road. It seems like it's blocked. All right, we're gonna figure out what, how to get there. All right, real quick update. Can't figure out why 87's closed. We're looking at potentially trying to reconvene with it, but ultimately we just don't know because there's no information about it. The, at least that we can find. So we're just gonna go up to Flagstaff, Sedona area and reconvene with the uh, I-40 and just barrel our way through to Albuquerque. We should get there around 1.30. Damn, hella abandoned buildings. Uh, it was already gonna be a long day, 400 miles, something like that. Now it's, now it's a really long day. Most of the day was just whatever. We hop from gas station to gas station and stop for lunch. If you've ever been on I-40, you probably already know. It's kind of just a lot of bullshittery. Actually, some bullshittery would have been nice. There ain't shit out there. At one of the gas stations, who fucking knows where, it's been a slog. I whipped out the Rolly Flex. Why? Don't know. It's not like anyone has ever gotten anything good in the middle of the harsh midday ass light on Ectochrom. So I took this photo of Tim and it's fine, which is a generous word to use here. Shadows are absolutely crushed into oblivion. I mean, that shit is darker than the one time I left DiGiorno in the oven for three hours. It does make Tim seem like some mysterious and anonymous person on a bike though, so that's cool. But maybe I'm just selling this photo better than it actually is. 47 miles and we're done for the day. Let's get it. Whatever, 400 long ass miles later, we made it to our brother from another mother, Brendan's house, where my actual brother from the same mother was also. Man, you go and hug him first. Uh, you know, I just want to make you jealous because <laughs> I love him more. Well, it worked. <sighs> After pissing off all the neighborhood dogs with our exhausts, it was time to settle in and settle down. And by settle down, I mean drink more beer and throw shits. <laughs> Can I just fill my beer in peace? Between me and Matt, it was like, Matt, like I expect bitch. lobster. <laughs> 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 I took a nap on the way in. Yeah. It's pretty jarring to wake up and realize you're on a yeah. motorcycle. <laughs> Look at this dude. She shoots film. He's what trying to be artsy. What a f***ing tool. <laughs> hey, Jason. Yeah? 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 wonder if my... Is it still here? Yeah. yeah. I'll drink to that. Anyway, before we knew it, it was barbecue time, and I was prepared to stand over the grill shirtless with my pinky and my belly button, making sure my meats were cooked tenderly. I also took this photo and this photo, the latter being the, you know, better one, I think. The colors could be a lot better, but compositionally, you know, it's working okay. It's hella zoomed in. Yeah, because I'm far away, on the side. Anything else? This photo also sucks. I don't know what was going on. It couldn't possibly be me. It was probably the camera or lens or maybe swamp gas refracting off Venus or something. I don't think it was me at all. It couldn't be me. God, I missed that. <laughs> What are you looking at? I think so. Why are there so many motorcycles in here? We're starting a game. <laughs> 
Be sure to read. Okay. You guys count me down? Yeah, yeah. From Five, 400. Four, 400. <laughs> Two, one, go! It is a good morning because today is the day of the concert and I'm not hungover, which is some kind of miracle. I don't know what we're gonna do today, but I do know we're not gonna hop on the bikes. So we actually did hop on the bikes that day. Hopefully shoot some stuff. I finished the Yachtachrome last night. Probably gonna put it into black and white. The clouds here in Albuquerque are very like fluffy and, and like sprinkled across the sky, which is always like very blue. I think Caleb told me once that the clouds here were like really good. He's a cloud professional, I guess. Gonna shoot it with an orange filter. Let's go ahead and load that up and get some coffee. It's pretty early. This shot is great. It's definitely underexposed because of the, you know, backlight, but I do like the tones quite a bit. I don't know why I ever f around with color. Black and white just always seems to work. That morning was slow moving, but at least my brother was awake and in a good and totally non-aggressive mood. Do you sleep all right? Who gives a shit? Let's steal stuff from Brendan. Like what? I don't think there's anything of value over here. <laughs> There's a, at the bottom of the fridge, there's a vanilla almond milk. What'd you say? He's asking if the mug was clean. <laughs> <laughs> Not about the status of the almond milk. Oh yeah, so we get ripped off right now. After some morning tow truck repo entertainment to pair nicely with our special coffee. I attempted to fix my helmet, you know, beyond the electrical tape hack job that I had in place. Despite my ass being redder and flatter than ever before, my brother and I decided to hop back on the chrome and check out Albuquerque a little. Of course, I was packing my Rolly Flex because who knows, maybe I'll finally take a solid photo, though it wasn't looking good. Don't drink this. Don't? Let's guess what we drink. It's 151. <laughs> What's up? No uh, helmet rattle, at least right now. Let's see how it holds up when it we're going 60. I'm doing a little cruise with my brother. We both have had motorcycle licenses for a couple of years now and never gotten a chance to fly together, I guess you could say. So we're gonna go to Old Town, Albuquerque, and uh, I don't know, probably stop in, take a walk around. It'd be a cute little date, man on man brother date. Why do you always have to ruin my footage, man? I can't use you mean this now. <laughs> make your footage. Oh, uh, more of this. We went to check out this hotel that seemed pretty cool, and boy, was it. I think I could have shot it better, but some photos like this one are actually kind of nice. At first glance, you know, it's just a lobby. 
whatever. But if you look at it longer, the receptionist is about dead center and framed nicely inside this door and then, you know, inside this alcove. The chandelier has some nice halation glow and the highlight roll off outside the door is phenomenal. However, for every solid photo, there's like three turds. I don't know what the f I was thinking of taking this shot, but I did and I must be publicly shamed for it. Daddy's home. Anyway, with the show growing closer, we decided to go get some food before we obliterate our stomachs with biblical proportions of drugs and alcohol. And we're glad we did because at the restaurant, Brendan found the nucleus chip. Back of the house and looking pretty fly for a pale ass white guy, I busted out the rolly and shot some hot bangers in the backyard. Like this one, pretty solid. But honestly, this is the one for sure. Good lighting, good layering, and interesting to look at. What more can you ask for on black and white? Anyway, the show eventually started at like 10 p.m. or you know, 20 o'clock for all you Europeans. And yeah, it definitely got hot, swampy, and sexy for sure. On our down day, strategically scheduled to recover from the concert the night prior, Tim Squared decided to hit the greens and I decided to come along for, you know, S's and G's. I don't give a literal rat's ass about golf. I grew up in a town that had a lot of golf courses and country clubs and it always seemed just, you know, boring as shit. But I thought in the moment that tagging along would be an interesting exercise in pain and photography. You know, shooting something that I'm pretty apathetic about. I do think it's really easy to fall into this hole of like, nothing around you is very interesting and you need to go somewhere new and exotic to take good photos. It's a groove that I've personally fallen into many times, but that's not a good approach. I guess if you can't photograph the familiar, then how are you gonna photograph the unfamiliar? Regardless, with the Kent mirror and my camera absolutely ripped through, in my naivete, I loaded some more Ektachrome for the job. Hello. Hey. Nice camera. Thank you. Kind of a pain in the ass to reload. These initial photos are okay, nothing too crazy. There isn't much color out there worth shooting, to be honest, and I think that's the problem. Maybe black and white would have been the move, or hell, even Aerochrome if I was packing. It's a lot of flex in this driver. Aren't they supposed to do that? No. Depends. I'm not that experienced to know, but I know this is definitely the flexiest driver I've ever used. It's basically a pool noodle. <laughs> This is probably the best photo I took there. Visually interesting, for sure. I don't know what the smoke was from. I mean, it's Albuquerque. It could be a gender reveal explosion or it could be someone barbecuing up some downright filthy squirrel meat. We'll never know. I do wish I gave the shot a little bit more light. All these shots, actually. It's passable as it is, but yeah, a fraction more shadow detail would have helped, which is tough because this was definitely the shot closest amongst the set to being good. Yeah, here's the uh, golf ball that I'd hit. This is why I don't play golf. Damn, dude, you think? Gotta can it. Anyway, eventually I gave up on that pursuit when I remembered Ektachrome is expensive as sh**.
necessary. So remember not that long ago how I was complaining about 470 miles in one day? Well, the next day, the plan was to go from Brandon's place in Albuquerque to Las Vegas, Nevada. Tomorrow's a big day. 575 miles. I don't know what we're thinking. Let's do it. 5 a.m. Time to wake up all the neighbors. I guess this gas station is closed some reason. Okay, well, I guess that's why I got spare fuel. That ride out was pretty tough, to say the least. It wasn't a great start to a very long day. We went up in elevation on I-40 headed west, and boy howdy did we freeze our chicken nuggets off. I know, dude. It got down to 38. Really? Yeah. I got a little uh, frost warning on my dashboard, and it happened like instantly too. Let's get something to like eat and drink and give it a time. Give it a little bit of time. That's too cold. Yeah. <sighs> uh, okay. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but it was getting kind of dicey there for a second. The temperature rapidly dipped. It's like we hit this cold pocket, I don't know. Uh, so we stopped at this gas station, got some food, coffee, and uh, we're back at it. It's still cold, but at least it's warming up. All right. All right. Another 80 or so miles done. We're in Arizona. Oh, there's an abandoned building here that somebody is in, probably. We are in Holbrook, just outside of the Petrified National Forest. And uh, not freezing anymore. So it's a win for us. Let's gas up and keep it moving. I was on the highway. We're probably going about 80. And I look down and I see this uh, this tank bag here. The zipper on the bottom was open. So I reached in there and made sure the TLR was still there and the uh, and this phone. And they were both there, which was good. I just needed to find a way to zip it up and secure it. So I reduced speed, put on cruise control, took my hands off the bars and zipped it up real quick. Years of uh, riding bikes with no handlebars uh, paid off or something. Glad nothing flew out. Realistically, you should probably just pull over. <laughs> That's what I'll do next time, I promise. Still have about 350 miles to Vegas. We are on the final stretch. We have uh, 63 miles to uh, our spot in Vegas. It is currently 94 degrees. So we're not having the best time. There we go. The temperature on the dash is saying 99 degrees now. And boy, does it feel like it. 38 degrees, 99 degrees. be wrong but I think the Hoover Dam is over there somewhere. Yeah I'm guessing it is based on all these people. Well we made it to Vegas. 
only have 12 miles to go, but of course there's traffic. It is 101 degrees on the dash. It's been a, uh, a very long ride, and a lot of it's been through the heat. Kind of ready to just experience the miracle of air conditioning. Anyway, finally out of the extreme heat and extreme cold, I guess, we took a moment and realized we were in Vegas and currently sober, which is like dividing by zero. It just can't happen. We decided to reward ourselves from the long day with White Castle, even though I think our bodies have been through enough already. The next morning, I decided to kick the hangover by grabbing my Rolleiflex and taking some shots of the signs around Fremont Street. I mean, what else are you supposed to do in Vegas at 11 a.m.? Well, I don't think I did them justice. I do think I got some okay shots, which eventually led me to this. It's great, probably the best from the trip, and it reminded me of why I do f around with color you know, sometimes. The one good shot amongst like 30 is a tough sell. The lady in the shot is framed perfectly. The contrast of her against this like dark void in front of her is pretty nice. And the gold mixed with the red colors are straight up just hitting. It feels like she's alone in some apocalyptic empty Las Vegas setting or something. I also attempted to take some night photos, but I didn't really get anything good. I know I could do better, and someday I will, though this is like my sixth time in Vegas, and I haven't gotten it done yet, so I don't really have high hopes. Rest in peace, Rob, anyway, we went to the Heart Attack Grill that night, possibly because we were hungry, or possibly because I was hoping a greasy burger might finally kill me once and for all. I'm ready to f***ing die. If you don't finish your meal or your big ass drink, they shame the shit out of you. So naturally, Tim and I, being freaks, we left a few drops behind. Anyway, that spank sesh was transcendent. We woke up the next day reawakened with spiritual enlightenment, like a renaissance era philosopher ready to put in some deep thinking about the consequences of our actions. Vegas didn't really need us anymore and we'd gotten what we needed from it. I grabbed my now empty Rolly Flex and we hit the dusty trail back home to LA with swollen asses. But at least we could rest a little bit easier knowing that our money makers weren't, you know, Crayola Jazzberry Jam red because of the bikes you know, this time. Anyway, before we hear my closing thoughts on everything, I'd like to first thank today's sponsor Squarespace for their ongoing support. Need a website that stands out from the crowd and fast? Let me introduce you to your new best friend, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that features the ability to truly unlock your creative potential. Start with one of hundreds of professionally designed templates or get started crafting your visionary website with something called Blueprint AI, a new powerhouse feature in Squarespace's building toolkit. Blueprint AI is an automated way to generate the foundation of your website by answering a few simple questions at the get-go and letting the algorithm figure out the rest for you. With 1.4 billion potential design combinations and the brand new Fluid Engine, a sleek new way to drag and drop elements of your website wherever at your disposal, you can build the website of your dreams faster than ever before. And best of all, if you run into any snags at any point, you can get in touch with Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support or find the answer you need amongst the always available help guides. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. Anyway, that's that. I don't really think I got 
very many good photos from my travels this time around. Maybe after finishing the video, you would also agree. Sure, there are some that I really like and maybe that's good enough. This go around really felt like it was more about the experience and the camera it was more or less supplementary. If you come home with several shots that you're excited about, then perhaps it's worth it overall and almost makes the expense of film semi worth it. And you know what? F it. We broke some personal distance records. I don't think we'll ever come close to 575 miles in a day ever again because that shit sucked. But hey, at least we never complained once. We actually complained like 10 times. One thing is definitely for sure though, I need to stop taking pictures of gas stations. Everybody does it and they all do it better than me. Whatever, I like the Rolly Flex quite a bit. It's a good travel companion and, you know, everyone on the street has to say something when they see it, so that's kind of cool. The lens is definitely a little bit dreamy sometimes, but I ain't hating it. I believe photographers call it character. You should get some sometime. Anyway, that's about it. I hope that you gained something from this video. I don't know what it'd be, but I am hopeful nonetheless.